Hey guys, I hope you're all okay. It's, um, it's a bit of a weird one, this, isn't it? Don't really know what's going on. But I think first and foremost, we definitely need to give ourselves a little bit of a a little bit of a pat on the back because I think we're all doing pretty well given all the uh, all the news that's going on. I mean, personally, I've still got 48 rolls of toilet roll upstairs and 16 bags of pasta, so I'm all right. <laughs> the BTCC has always been one big family really isn't it and I think from the moment that the media day went non-public your your reaction to it all has been really good really good and and it's it is a difficult time but you know this is why you guys are the are the best fans around because you understand it we're all gutted and we all want to be we all want to be racing and we all want to be getting back out there and competing. But we just got to sit tight, trust in what the government are saying, trust in our great leader, Lord Gow, and pray that we can get back racing as soon as possible. Now, there's only really two things that keep us in motorsport. Now, one of them is you awesome fans, and the other one is our awesome partners and while we're all really stressed out and miserable and missing motorsport it's kind of never been a more important time to keep you guys entertained and support our partners we're going to try and put together some vlogs for you some like btcc behind 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 the scenes of what goes on so let us know the kind of stuff you're after let us know what you want to see we're going to look at everything from how we plan testing to how we design race suit to how we design the crash helmet and the livery to everything else in between so there's going to be loads of stuff to have a look at so keep your eyes peeled but let us know the kind of stuff you're after let us know in comments let us know in messages if there's anything special or particular that you want to see let us know now, I forgot to mention in that, Jeff Army, if you're looking at streaming some sort of Fatal Friday activity, I'm not interested. Firstly, and most importantly, is because of Fiona, the police will be called again. Let's, let's get that straight. The police will be called again, so I won't be partaking in that. And secondly, I hate tents. Hate them. And even if it means having to put a tent up in my living room, I'm still not interested. Moroccan veg, if you're wondering. Okay, so as we would be heading into Donington Park Race Weekend, uh, this weekend coming, um, I thought I would kind of run you guys through the kind of prep that we do going into a race weekend or what I would do certainly about how you know I can make sure that I'm in the best place possible to understand what's going on. Now first things first before we get started I'm going to have to wear a hat because of this. It is a terrible head of hair um, and I do apologise. So a tingle cap it is. It's a bit blatant but stick with it. I, 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 it'll be fine. So first things first head across to YouTube. Now I'm basically looking for any bit of information I can find, any juicy bits of information I can find. Now that could be anything from um, sort of Donington 2019 poll, Tom, nah not this year. Um, any bits of information, anything from track position to um, techniques that people are using right the way through to you know speeds at the end of straights to work out gear ratios if something's doing something different to us as well so there's loads of bits of information we can pick up on um so i'm gonna head across and watch colin's pole app from last season and see what we can pick up from there so like i say i'm looking for anything that he's doing that maybe i'm not doing um, anything that looks you know, massively different, um, but also any weaknesses, um, anything that I can kind of pick up and see, you know, they've got a bit of understeer. I can listen to any comments that he's making to pick up, you know, if he's saying, oh, we've been struggling with understeer here all weekend, I'll pick up on that and know that potentially that's a little weak area for them as well. So it's all about trying to get a little bit of an upper hand on your opposition before you've got to your race weekend. So what we've got here 
is the uh, Cosworth Alive Drive system. <clears throat> now, this is uh, the system that all the cars carry, so we all have this system. And what it's designed to do is it couples your data with your video. So you can marry the two up, and if, you're, if you've been a bad boy, for instance, and you've had a bit of contact, and you go to the stewards and they have to go through the footage, this is what they'll see. So it gives you all the information. So everything from up the top here, you've got your track position, you know, where you are on the track with a little GPS beacon, so you can see he's coming out the chicane now. At the top right, we've got all of his current lap information, so his current lap time, his best lap time, the time of the day, if you happen to marry that up with your data or anything else like that, obviously name. Uh, your G meter, so where the loading of the car is at any point, so you can see maximum loads. And the really juicy and the, the really juicy bit of information, the bit that we use the most, is this bottom corner here. So you've got the green bar is throttle, your brake is just down here, that's a red bar that will appear here, you'll see shortly. Speed, RPM, gear position, and steering angle. So there's a lot of information there, really useful, important information that we could pick up on. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. We're really looking in this bottom area. Now, one of the things that we can pick up on from an engineering point of view is top speed and RPM to see what we're doing ratio-wise, if anyone's using slightly different ratios to us. We're also looking at a driver's perspective now, anything that I can pick up on. So his braking point, where he's braking, his exact braking position. So it looks like he's just at the end of this green triangle here. So I now know, in race trim, where he's going to break. All of that information goes in my little black book. So I know every single bit of information about all the other drivers, what they're doing, how they're going about it, braking positions, how much curb they use. Not only is it up there, it's also written down, which is really important. So he's braked at the end of the triangle. We can see he's down to third gear. And then the other thing that we'll look for is his speed. So you can see 133, that'll go down to about 110, I'd imagine-ish. Yeah, about 110. So that's his minimum corner speed. You will have heard of say that loads of times before. And again, I've noted that down in my little black book. So then I know when we go to debriefs, the sort of speeds that we're looking at, what a sort of a pole time is. Because I know what the speed is at the end of the straight. I know what the minimum corner speed is. So then I know from my own point of view, what we should be aiming at and what we should be looking for. So he comes out of Redgate and he's down to Hollywood, I think this is, going down the Craners. Now this left hander is so, 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 so tricky, it doesn't matter how many hundreds of times you've driven it before, it's always one of those corners that you tense up for because it's really, really high speed. Now you'll see his throttle has come back from full and he has a little bit of a lift. Now in a rear wheel drive car, you end up with a little bit of under sit, so the front wheel's falling away. With the uh, front wheel drive cars, we end up with a little bit of oversight, so the rear tyre is giving way. So it's always one of those, you want to try and do it flat, but it, it's so, so difficult too. So I know that he's having a little lift there. I'll look at his sort of speeds, 213, two, you know, 212 through there. So again, noted down. And then we head into the old hairpin. <clears throat> again, a really, really important corner. And this is a really, really important part of the lap because how you exit from the old hairpin takes you all the way up the hill towards McLean's. So I'll have a look what he's doing. He's going to be fourth gear, opening the corner up, loads of this inside curve, and really important to get back to power full early, really, really early on. So you can see he's done that really well. He, he has, he's Colin, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's very, very good. And you can see that run out of the old hairpin takes you all the way up this hill, right the way up into McLean's. So it's a really, really important part of the lap. Two corners, these two left-handers should, should be flat, um, and he's just struggling to get the front in there. So again, I'm noting all of these bits and pieces down. You can hear him actually say, I think, that he ends up getting a little bit of understeer. McLean's, which is another, what I'd call understeer corner, trying to keep it. So there you go, he's given me a bit of information there. He said it's an understeer corner, noted down. I know when I'm up behind him, he's going to be struggling there. If my car's good there, I've got the opportunity to get him going up to copy. So it's all bits of information like that. What's he doing into here? Well, he's fourth gear, he's taking the brakes in you know, quite a long time because he's struggling with that under, he's trying to keep a little bit of weight on the nose. And here comes that steering lock. We can see he's really struggling to get the front in there and then he struggles with traction on the way out. So that is a corner he's a little bit wary of. So in the race, I'm gonna attack him now. I know that straight off. I looked at his mid-corner speed, etc., etc. 
Up the hill into Coppice. This is such a tricky corner. You can see, you can't see the corner. You can't see the apex. All you're doing is looking up into the sky and looking at these treetops into here. So it's really, really tricky. Um, and you really want to carry as much speed through because after this corner, you've got a long straight. And you want to maximise your exit speed from Coppice all the way down that back straight if you can. So he's going to be fourth gear. Again, I'll look at his mid-corner speed. 118, 119, somewhere around there. Noted in the book. I know where he is. We can see he's nice and early back to power to try and drive it there. He's also got quite a lot of steering lock on. So again, I know what's going on there. I know to pick up on that. And if I've got my car working really well, that's an area that I can exploit. So we'll be looking now at oh, it's been a really good gears. We'll be looking at his speed at the end of the straight as well. And we'll be seeing. So he's kind of maxed out at sort of 218, I think, that, uh, that final number came out to be. So 218 Ks down the back straight. So I know, you know, where we are with that. We know if we've got a little bit more, if we've got a little bit less, I know what we what we're fighting against. Now the final chicane is really tricky. Again, he's got a little bit of traffic in front, which will have been making his life fairly difficult. So in qualifying spec, that's the last thing you want. The last thing you want is to be coming across cars into the chicane. Because he'll have been having it on his delta. We've got a little lap delta that tells us if we're up or if we're down on our lap time. So it's a live number that, that, that fluctuates back and forth. Hopefully under, which means you're about to beat your best lap time. We always use, or I personally use this building on the left hand side because there's not actually many braking markers down here. It's really, really tricky. So believe it or not, we use these doors, or I certainly use these doors as my braking reference. And I always try to either get at this door if you possibly can. Now, Conan, I guess, was, was a little nervous of, of these cars in front, but I always try to reference that door. It's about there. It's going to be a third gear corner, and really important to carry loads of speed through this whole section, because this is where you can really make quite a lot of lap time up if you're, if you're, uh, if you're feeling a bit brave. They changed the curbs for last year, which meant we had to have these horrible rector cell barriers in, which actually make it really difficult to see. So they're a horrible thing to have to navigate, but we're all dealing with it. It's the same for everybody. Audi comes to the last corner. He manages to get through the traffic really, really well. So he's very lucky in that respect that it didn't hold him up too much. But there he goes. He's gone across the line, a 109.8. That's in my book. I know what he's doing. And it's bits of information like that that I'm looking out for all the time. I'll go back through you know, 2018, 2017, 2016, as far back as I need to go to make sure I've got as much information in my armoury as possible. So that's the kind of stuff I'm looking at before I go from my own driver's perspective. Um, but I'll also be looking through my own data, I'll also be looking at all sorts of other pieces. But we've got more than enough time to go through bits of you know information on how we study data and all sorts of other stuff that it's probably going to be quite geek heavy um, but it should be quite enjoyable you quite uh, it should be quite something behind 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 the scenes that you can uh, that you can embrace on. So that's what I'm looking for. Of course, it's a good lap from Colin. He's world class. Um, hopefully, if we get a chance to race there this year, that uh, I can get better than a 109.8. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope we've given you something that potentially you didn't already know, or given you a slight insight into something you hadn't already seen behind the scenes before. If you like it, leave us a comment with any other videos you'd like us to record, and anything that particularly you fancy watching. Thanks, guys. <laughs>